Hi there. Welcome to Liquidation Preference, the podcast that discusses everything founders need to know about startup law and venture capital over a beverage of our choosing. I'm your host, Andrew Kusmal, and I'm glad you stopped by for a quick drink. Today, we will be discussing entity formation while I enjoy a hearty stout. So grab a drink, pull up a seat, and let's get into it. Today's episode is brought to you by Kusmal Legal, the law firm dedicated to helping founders navigate the legal process of starting, running, and fundraising for a startup. Head on over to kusmallegal.com. That's K-U-S-S-M-A-U-L legal.com to read great material tailored for founders and get help with all your startup's legal needs. So for today's discussion, what we're really going to be covering is the type of entity your startup needs to be and where you should form it, what state you should form it in. Now, I chose a stout beer because when I think of a stout, I think of a beer that's very heavy and firm, and it actually relates very well to today's discussion in regards to entity formation because you want to get your startup structured and formed correctly in the beginning so you get that solid, firm foundation that your startup needs to be able to grow and succeed. With today's conversation, I was thinking a lot about it and kind of the answers to these questions of what entity you need to be and which state you need to form in. And the most obvious answer is tradition, right? Why do we, why do startups need to do the things that they do and be structured this way? Well, because all startups have done it for, for decades, right? And while that's true, there's really, there's really more to it than that if you scratch the surface. And I feel that a lot of people out there have just been told the answer, oh, you need to do this because it's tradition, just because you need to do it. And that may be off-putting to a lot of people because, you know, when we think of tradition, probably think of something that's old, you know, maybe outdated. And that really turns off a lot of people, Um, especially when it comes to which state your startup needs to be formed in, which we'll touch on here in a minute. But the thing about tradition is it can stop you from running headfirst into a wall. And hopefully with today's conversation, I can we can scratch the surface and I can be able to provide to you reasons more or more reasons, I should say, for why you need to structure your startup a certain way and why you need to set up and or form in a certain state. And hopefully just sheds more light on it and provides you with a, a better answer than just because or because it's tradition. So what entity should your startup be? Well, I'm, on, I'm operating under the assumption that most of you who are listening are founders of startups, technology startups that want to go down the whole venture capital path raising a lot of money from investors, high growth, sprint towards the finish with an exit of, you know, an acquisition or an IPO. And that's really what this conversation is. That's really who this conversation is tailored to. If you are going down that path, then the only entity that you need to be and that you have to be is a corporation, more specifically a C Corp. Now, If you weren't going down that very specific lane that I just described, then maybe another entity would suffice, like an LLC, for example. So why do you need to be a corporation? Well, of course, like I said earlier, right, just because tradition, you've heard that many times, I'm sure. But when I was thinking about it, there's really four, I identified four reasons why you need to be a corporation. The first one is that the corporation, how it's structured, it's able to have ownership of all the technology and the IP that you're working on. Think of it as a legal entity is what they call like a, like an actual person, you know, the corporation, how it's structured can own assets, can own property and can own technology and intellectual property. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably thinking, well, why do I want to transfer over 
all the technology, all the rights to it, all the IP to, to the startup, to the company, to the corporation. And the answer is really, because if you're trying to raise money from investors, they're going to want, they're going to want to see that. And now why do they want to see that? Well, let's think about it here for a little bit. Let's say you and a couple co-founders are working on some sort of new app. One of the co-founders leaves and he never transferred over the intellectual property to the company. There was never any agreements in place. Well, what you don't want to have happen is two, three years down the road when you're doing really well for him to come back into the picture and tie you up in a lot of litigation saying that they own half of the revenue. It's, it can just become a big mess and it can bankrupt a company. Now, investors know this and that's why you need to transfer it over because they know that it, that can happen and they've seen it happen. And actually, you know, I'm going to tell you a story. I was, I was talking to an investor and she worked in the fashion tech space and they had a startup, her and the other investors that she worked with that was developing technology in that industry. They really liked what they were doing and they wanted to invest in them. And then once they started doing the due diligence, they found out that the IP, the technology they were working on was never officially transferred over to the startup. The corporation didn't own it. And to make matters worse, one of the founders had left like a year before that. Well, what happened? Well, they didn't invest. They knew that it was too much of a risk to put their money into the company because of those stories, that, that exact scenario that I described earlier. And they know that that can happen. It was too risky and they pulled out. And unfortunately, I don't know what happened to that startup, but um, you know, hopefully they made it. But you don't want to be in that situation where you think you're going to be funded and then come to find out you're, you're, you're not due to something like that that could have been fixed in the very beginning. Another reason why you need to be a corporation is that a corporation makes it easier to incentivize crucial early hires and future employees. As you should know and are probably fully aware, when it comes to hiring early employees, the, the, the talent that you need to get your startup to the next level, you're not going to be able to pay the market salary, right? You're not even paying yourself market salary or really a salary to begin with. So you need to make up for that in other ways. And that's through issuing, issuing them shares, equity in the company through various uh, methods. Another reason why the third reason why you need to be a corporation is investor preference. Here we go again, right? With tradition. Oh, this is what, that's what investors want. That's what investors expect. Well, again, let's scratch the surface. There's a little bit more than just that. One of the reasons why investors want you to be a corporation, more specifically a C corporation, is that entity allows you to structure special shareholder rights and protections through preferred stock. When investors are investing in your company, they're going to want, they're going to negotiate for special rights and special protections regarding their investment and their equity in the company. And a corporation, a C corporation allows you to structure that preferred stock that will have all those special rights and those special protections. Another reason why investors want you to be a corporation is due to tax reasons and limited partner reasons. Now, I'm not going to really dive into the whole tax code or how venture capital firms work with getting money from limited partners, but suffice it to say, the firms and the limited partners don't want to be taxed on what's called passive income and not getting any, not getting any money in return and getting it taxed on it. The last reason why you need to be a corporation is limited liability protection. I think everyone knows this. I think it's no big secret. Limited liability protection, what it says is that the shareholders will not be personally liable for all the debts and the obligations of the corporation there are some caveats there that we're not going to dive into, but I put this one last because it's not the main reason why your startup needs to be a corporation. Just think of it as the cherry on top. 
Now, if those four reasons for why your startup needs to be a corporation were not enough to convince you, then you know maybe this story will. I once had a client who, despite me going over everything on why their startup needed to be a corporation, just for some reason, they had it in their head that they wanted to be an LLC. And so that's what I did. I set up their, I set up their startup as an LLC and they paid me to form it and they paid the state filing fee to create it, to file it with the state. Well, sometime later when they were looking to raise their first round of financing, they found a few investors who were really excited in what they were doing and wanted to invest a significant sum of money into their company. Uh, with one caveat though, they found out that they were an LLC and the investors said, well, you need to convert or be a corporation before we invest. So they came back to me and they had to pay me again to convert their LLC over to a corporation and they had to pay another state filing fee. And it was just more expense than necessary. Something that could have been avoided from the very beginning. And it slowed down the deal. It only slowed it down by a couple of days, but still you have to remember sometimes timing is of the essence with these deals. And the longer it takes from the investor who says yes to having them wire the money into your startup's bank account, the greater the chance of them backing out. So now that we've discussed why your startup needs to be a corporation, The next big question is, okay, well, where do I incorporate? Well, like I said, if you're on that venture capital path, traditionally speaking, gonna have to be Delaware. And honestly, that's the state that I recommend to the majority of my clients who are on that path is Delaware. Again, why Delaware? Well, just because. You know, that's, that's what, that's what, that's what VCs have been investing in for decades, Delaware and Delaware corporations. Well, again, scratch the surface. There's a little bit more to it. So why, why Delaware and why do I recommend Delaware for a startup? There's really two reasons to it. When I think about it, one is first mover status. And the second is an extensive litigation history. Now, what I mean by first mover status? Well, you obviously know that if you're the first one to do anything in a new industry or a new market, you know, that has a lot of carries a lot of weight, you know, that actually helps propel you. And it's, it's, I don't really know how else to say it, but it's like the ideal thing, right? Because it's going to be something that sticks with you. You're always the first one to do it. That's exactly like Delaware. Delaware was the first state to draft a very business friendly and comprehensive business organizations code, business law. Because of that, all these corporations converted or moved to Delaware and VC firms have started, started investing in uh, Delaware companies because of that, because of all those business friendly laws. Now, A lot of other states have emulated Delaware's business organization code. For example, my home state, Texas, Texas has a very friendly business organizations code, very similar, very modeled off of Delaware's. But the reason why you still need to be a Delaware corporation versus a Texas is because of that second reason, that extensive litigation history that I talked about, or I mentioned earlier with Delaware being the first mover having the oldest business code, let's say they've had more time than other states to have extensive litigation on everything in that code. So anything that you can think of any sort of situation that's come up in any sort of business setting or scenario or relationship, what have you has been argued in front of the Delaware courts. Investors like this and more specifically their attorneys like this because they're able to accurately advise the investors on how they need to act or 
how the courts are going to rule in certain scenarios. And now why is this important? Well, because when you get to like your series A, for example, investors are going to be taking a board seat on your startup. When someone takes a board seat, they're obligated by law to act in a certain way with the company to do certain things in a certain way. And it's nice for them to know one, how they need to act. And two, if something ever did come up, what the courts are going to, how the courts are going to rule. With that being said, sometimes incorporating in your home state is okay. And it really just, it really just depends on what you're trying to achieve. Incorporating in your home state is okay if you're just only looking to get funds from investors, you know, in that state or within that region. I'll use Texas, for example. If you're only wanting to raise funds from investors in Texas, there are a lot of uh, investor funds in Texas that focus just on Texas startups. If that's what you're wanting to do, then your home state will be fine. However, if you're expanding outside of your home state or your region, which I think is easier to do now with everything going virtually, I think we've been kind of finding that location really doesn't matter anymore. If you're reaching out to investors on the West Coast or the East Coast, you know, don't be surprised if you have to come back to me or your attorney and pay them to convert or transfer your corporation over to a Delaware corporation. And one last note on this, when it comes to incorporating in Delaware, what I tell my clients is some VCs may object to your startup being incorporated in your home state, but no VCs will object to your startup being incorporated in Delaware. Well, I wish I could order another round with you, but unfortunately, it's time to go. If you'd like to learn more about what was discussed today, head on over to my blog at kusmallegal.com. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Tech Startup Attorney, attorney spelled A T T Y, or on Clubhouse at Startup Attorney. I hope you enjoyed our time together, your beverage of choice, and that you learned something useful. More importantly, I hope you enjoyed this much needed break from running your startup. Being a founder is stressful, and it's important to take breaks every once in a while. While you're always taking care of your startup, you shouldn't forget to take care of yourself. See you next time. Everything discussed in this episode is purely educational in nature and should not be interpreted in any way as legal advice specific to your startup. If you have any questions about what was discussed on today's show and how it pertains to your startup or situation, please consult with your legal counsel.